turn it up, turn it up. You're listening to the fastest growing leadership podcast in the Philippines. Bringing you the realest mentoring advice from experts on leadership. I'm a real big believer in like letting people do their thing. Customer experience and everything human. Some people see the thing that they want and some people see the thing that prevents them from getting the thing that they want. The Young Leader Podcast. Keeping it 100, drill and authentic. Now your host, international speaker, trainer and your favorite human, Bryken Dial. Bryken Dial. Hi everyone, welcome to the Young Leader Podcast where my job is to understand the journey of these leaders and visionaries. I am Bryken Dayo and thank you so much for being here. Our Tonight's feature is a multi-awarded naval officer of the Philippines. He is a Navy school director, a qualified warship watchstander, and currently the most outstanding officer of the year of the Department of National Defense, DISG. He trained under the United States Armed Forces and the Royal Australian Navy, and also an Anvil awardee. He's also the youngest to become a spokesperson of the Philippine fleet at the age of 25. I can go on and on with all these achievements and awards, but one thing is for sure that this guy is a public servant and a natural leader at heart. Here at the Young Leader Podcast, let us all welcome one of the Philippines' brightest, youngest lieutenant commander. Ladies, gentlemen, this is Errol E. De La Cruz. Welcome to the show, E. Wow, amazing, amazing, generous introduction. Well, by the way, yeah. I, I like the most favorite human being thing on your intro. Oh, thank yeah, you very much, right. man. Right, guys? Yeah, yeah. I think one of the most loved human beings on earth. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know what? Uh, let's let's go straight to the you know the first pop up question that I that I have here. What do you miss? Let's do this. Yeah. What do you miss about childhood? E. Oh, that's a very interesting question. I think. Yeah. <laughs> one of the biggest things that I miss, like probably, probably, just you know, like things that you don't have any problems. You don't have to think about anything. You know, when when we're kids. You don't need to think about anything. You don't worry about anything. You just sleep when your parents tell you to sleep. You just yeah, eat, man. study. Well, I'm worries, you know? I, I think that's yeah. what I miss most. Yeah, I, I, well, that, that's true. Uh, I, I miss that as well. Like, you know, you don't have any problems with the bills <laughs> and everything. And it's true. just like sleep and, and it's also your grades. One important thing as well. Yep. One thing that I miss as well is that I think... Um, well, I still do that now. I still dream now. But when you were young, you have bigger dreams because you haven't done anything yet. And it's a good wow. thing because, you know, you will really like appreciate everything that you've accomplished because you haven't done anything yet. So I think yeah, that's man. one thing that I see. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, well, talking about dreams, I know by yung mga like yung pina ultimate dream mo when you were a kid. Let's say elementary level dream. Yeah, yeah. What's your ultimate oh, dream? I man? wanted to be an astronaut. That's for sure. The only thing that I wanted to be. I wanted to okay. be an astronaut. <laughs> and then yeah, when yeah, did that? It's true. I wanted to it, be an astronaut. Yeah, me too. I actually wanted to be an astronaut <laughs> and then a pilot at some point. When did it stop? What what age did that you know the that uh, dream stop? Uh, like you know, maybe I can't really be an astronaut at some point. True, probably when you realize that you have to embrace reality. You know, yeah. it, it can still happen. Why not? Yeah, it yeah. can still yeah. happen. But then you you lean towards reality and you realize that perhaps I can just you know go into a different path and still be successful. And still be fulfilled. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not become an ast- astronaut. I may not be an astronaut now, but I'm happy. I'm fulfilled. I think uh-huh. I never missed anything. So I, I like the I like that um, 
you know, that phrase that you actually mentioned there, that you're actually happy at the moment, because I'm going to be asking you, I'm going to be asking you later on, you know, how do you define your own happiness at this, at this level? But to start, to start the episode, what do you do, E, and how do you do it? Great. So professionally, it's like my job now, yeah? Okay. So right now, um, by the way, I'm no longer with DISG. But I, w- I am now assigned as the Naval Affairs Advisor of Secretary of National Defense. So I am with the Office of the Senior Military Assistant as the Military Assistant for Naval Affairs for the DND. Um, my main job is technically give advices to the se- Senior Military Assistant about Naval Affairs, you know, updates and everything. So the Secretary of National Defense will be informed and updated of the things happening in the Navy. Other than that, um, I make sure that I am an effective liaison for the Navy and the DND. So yeah, I've been in that job for about one and a half months now. Okay, that is so fresh because the last Pretty time new. we talked, Pretty yeah, new. yeah, you were you were still in uh, under DND and wow, I am but still in DND the... now, but this is okay. a different office. Before I, I was in, I was part of um, the security group of the defense uh, of the DISG. I mean, the yes. DND, which is called DISG, and yeah. our function there before is for like um, security-wise and intelligence operations for DND. Um, now I was, I wouldn't say promoted, but I was transferred to a, to a position that I, 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 I like, I like it better. I, I actually believe I like it better. I think I like that position better. Why, why, why position. is that? Because, because you, you like to talk and now you're like a consultant of everyone. Uh, no, like not that. really. Because I just feel like my role now is a lot bigger than my role before. Although my role before was good, I was in charge of the entire physical security of the DND. I, I write like um, security surveys for the department and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I do advanced parties for... I do advance. Uh, I'm part of the advanced party as a team leader. If there will be trips yeah. outside Manila or even abroad, but now it's more of like a think tank. You know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can make studies, you can make researches, and you can make a good analysis of information that you can feed uh, to the DND. So I like it better. Wow, man! Like. Um a lot of things change. This is a surprise for you, by the way. I didn't tell you about this. Yeah, <laughs> man. Like, I wasn't really prepared for this. Because um, you had, a, like, a lot of achievements, a lot of awards, a lot of, a lot of chances. Oh, come and on. You just, you just keep on, you know, just keep on growing. Because I'm going to be asking with, uh, with those things uh, later as well. So, but before that, um, I want to thank you for your service. Uh, sobrang salamat talaga, especially during this COVID and we really appreciate your effort guys and lalo na ikaw nasa, nasa backline ka yeah and ah, you know, I remember um, you cried when I showed you a photo of me eating yeah, outside man. my, my yeah my man that was that was <laughs> something that I, I didn't I really appreciate your, your the things that you actually do like in general um, but when I saw that photo I was I was really you know it, it was something that it was really hard for me you were moved I, man yeah, man <laughs> I, I I shouted you out in one of the one of the you know uh, nice. webinars. You. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let a, a, a good clap for you guys. Um, so, E. Oh, I know. I that's know nice. Yeah, I know that you're not really. You know, when we were actually telling stories uh, before, uh, you you didn't really plan in you know being a, a navy officer at some point. So, True. can you tell us about your story on why did you choose? PMA, what was the first choice? Was it the first, cho- first this choice? This is good. This Can is you actually, you know, tell us a story. I, have, I haven't told anyone. Like, not, not a lot of people know about this story, but yeah, yeah, since this is the young leader and you're my yeah, friend, man. and I love you, <laughs> I'm going to share this in your show. So yeah, thanks, um, thanks. ever since I was in high school, I think I wasn't designed to be in the military. Uh, what I, why did I say that? It's just not my interest, you know? I always wanted to be a lawyer or probably my dream before was to be an astronaut. And then I shifted and thought that I, want, I wanted to be a lawyer, um, probably an accountant lawyer, a CPA lawyer. And that's, yeah. that's what I wanted to be. But then, um, well, until high school, that was what I was planning to do. And then one day... Um, well, you're from Tarlac. We're, we're from the same city. Shout uh, out. I was walking from, from church, yep, to all Tarlacenias out there. 
um, I was walking from church, uh, going home, and then there was this sergeant at the Tarlac State University where uh, they were, I think, the proctors for the exam. These guys there are like facilitating the exams for PMA. I never heard about PMA, to be honest. I, I never had, I, I don't have any military background. I don't know anyone who went to PMA. I technically don't know about PMA. I don't yeah, yeah. know about it. So I was, I was walking from church to that school because I have to like ride a jeepney there. And then someone like called me and said like, hey, um, how old are you? I said, I was 16. I was 16 that time. Like, ah, 16 po. And then he asked, do you have good grades? Well, I, I had decent grades. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I have decent, decent grades. And then he said, like, uh, are you sick? It's like, no, I'm not sick. Oh, take the exam for PMA. I said, it's like, what is PMA? And he said, like, ah, oh, it's a military school. Everything is free, blah, 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 blah. It's like, I said, I don't, I don't want to take the exam. And then he yeah. said, um, well, we have a little problem here. But before, there's no testing center in Pampanga, I think, in Pangasinan. Oh, no, there was in Pangasinan. No testing centers in Navesi and Pampanga. So all of these aspirants from all of these uh, provinces go to Tarla to take yeah. the exam. And of course, you have to pre-apply. You have to have, you have, to have a, a permit for you to, to you know, take the exam. And he told me that um, there's only one permit left. And there are 30 well-wishers from Pampanga who came at the same time. Wow. And he said, like, we'll have a big problem because if we will give, give this permit to any one of them, they might fight, you know. So we will tell them that it was you who owns this. I said, like, no, I don't want to do it. It's like, come on, it's just an exam. You, don't, you won't do anything anyway. Tarana, you, you take the exam. And I, I was a bit scared because he's in uniform. I was like, oh, oh sige po. So, <laughs> that, that went stereotype. inside the test. Yeah, it's true. I went inside the testing center, um, took the exam. Uh, I remember, because before you go to PMA, you don't usually use your names. You have like a, a cadet candidate number. Hmm. So I didn't use my own number. Uh, I didn't use the, that number doesn't belong to me, but you know, it can easily be changed. I was like, I don't have any, you know, like, um, documents to submit. It's like, ah, don't worry, it will be to follow. You can submit that tomorrow. Because that was a Sunday. And what happened is I took the exam and forgot about it, you know. I, I, I technically forgot about it. But still submitted the requirements, you know. Because I was afraid. Like, I even asked my parents to sign a parental consent without them knowing yeah. what they're signing. They just, you know, just signed it. It's like, ah, it's just a consent for school. It's like, okay, they signed it. Sent it to, to I think it was camp. Um, no call before Campaquino. Yeah. I think yeah. he was staying in Campaquino, so I sent it. I sent all the documents to him the following day. To cut the story short, a few months after the results came, and you know how big their luck is for yeah. PMA, you know? They, yeah. they would really have like streamers and all of this things. They would, they would post that streamer in front of TSU and say, like, Congratulations to the successful. The applicants who made it to the exams. Well, it's good. It's, normally, there's like there are like thirty thousand examinees every year. Thirty like thirty wow. to thirty five thousand. And they would really, what do you want to say? to get just a handful. Yeah. What happened is that the results came. It was posted there outside the issue, and my father saw it. My uncle saw it. <laughs> when I was at home, my uncle went and said and told my dad. Uh, oh, kuya, kapangalan ni Aaron yung pumasa sa PMA. <laughs> <laughs> and since my dad knew that uh, I'm not inclined with military, yeah, yeah. he says like, ah, oh, kapangalan lang niya siguro talaga. And then I was like, can you help me to get the result? It was me, I took the exam. He was shocked. Then I found out it was his dream. He actually took oh. the exam, but sadly, um, he wasn't able to, to get it. I mean, yeah, because... Hindi kompleto yung ipin. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that happened. Then I told my father, I still doesn't want to go. Eh, ano na, um, after the exam, you will be scheduled, scheduled for a physical and exam. medical examinations. Yeah. This will be in Manila for about a week. I told my father I don't want to go because that is not my dream. I already passed the exam. I'm happy with that. Period. 
a day before the a day before the physical Same. and medical yeah. examination he talked to me and told me alam mo wala kang kwentang tao <laughs> <laughs> your dad your dad lot, talking to you yeah this is my father yeah oh a my lot God. of okay. people dreamt to be in TMA and that is their only hope to have a better life yeah yung diyan sa kabilang barangay sabi niya yung anak ng ganito yan lang ang pag-asa nila sa buhay and then you got in hindi mo man lang hindi mo man lang i-grab sabi niya sa yeah. hindi ko pa rin sabi oh sige ganito na lang sabi niya pagpunta ka sa medical exam kasi executive check up yun it cost about 50,000 pesos and it's for oh. free oh, okay. at least we will know okay, this is an executive check up they check everything yeah, 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 yeah. at least we will know if you are ill or not Yeah. That will save us money. It was like, practical, yeah. So, that was the entry point for him. Tignan lang natin, baka may sakit ka, at least kung may sakit ka, mapagamot ka, alam natin na may sakit ka. Madidetect doon sa medical exam. Uh, para medyo nautu ako ng tatay ko. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I yeah. went to Manila, did the physical and medical examinations. And then, on my birthday, a um, few months after, I received the letter telling me that I, I got it. And uh, out of the 30,000 examinees, there were only 116 of us submitted. So I was very wow. happy. But I still decided not to go. What? So, <laughs> yeah. I got the really? letter like second, first week of March. The reporting date is April 1 in Baguio. I'm not convinced at all. I was like, nah, I won't do it. Opa, wala akong sakit. So okay na. Mm. Done deal. My father stopped talking, talking with me. Hindi na siya sumasabay ko and he never spoke me, to me again. And my mother was, you know, with his side. Kasi, that was the time na merong taga-kamiling na namatay sa training. Okay, okay. That was the kamiling, same year. by the way, guys, uh, kamiling is actually Zaya, near, the, the, near the city. A yeah. municipality in Tarlac. Yeah. yeah. There was one case of, uh, of a cadet who died of hazing that year. And he was from the same province. So my mom says like, no, I won't let you go. So a night before I went to Baguio, uh, my father told me like the same speech. Wala ka talaga kwenta ng tao. Kung di mo oh my yan. God. <laughs> sabi niya, kasi sabi niya, ang dami-daming nangarap niyan. Ako nga, I, I dreamt of that. Now you have the chance and you'll just throw it away. Wala kang kwenta ng tao. Maawa ka dun sa mga nangarap na hindi pumasa. Ang dami-daming gustong pumasok dyan. Ang dami-daming yan lang ang pag-asa sa buhay. Hindi nakapasok. Yeah. Tapos hindi mo nag-grab. Ang yabang mo naman, sabi mo sa akin. Try mo lang kahit one day, sabi niya sa akin. After one day, pag di mo nagustuhan, uwi na tayo. Sabi ko talaga niya, oo, one day lang. O punta ka lang one day. O two days. Pag di mo na nagkakaya, uwi ka na. Walang, walang question. Nauto na naman ako. O sige ha, ano na. Okay. So, yeah, I went. Pero from the moment... Uh, I rode the bus. This is the PMA bus now. Uh, okay. You ride the PMA bus in Manila. Sabay-sabay kayong dadali. The stopover of the bus was in Tarlac. Yeah. I almost went home. I swear. <laughs> the bus is stopped near Shiesta area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, like, it's a stopover because we, we all, like, traveled from Manila with all of the candidates now. Yeah. Parang there were like three bosses. Stopped in Tarlac. I went down. And says like, uwi na ako. All of my classmates said, you know, andito ka na eh. Nakasaya ka na sa base. Don't do it. Stay with us. You know? Kaya natin to and everything. And then I okay. realized, oh nga naman, andito na ako. So, okay, I'll go. When I went to Baguio, I just realized it was for me. That was the thing that changed my life. How? Yeah, how did you realize, to... sorry, how did you realize that it was for you? Because definitely along the journey, journey it was hard. It was really hard, yeah. But then, that was the first time I realized and learned about camaraderie. There was a power in mm. brotherhood, you know. When I was there, I saw that it was also a chance for me to start something new. I don't know anyone. Yeah. It is a place to start back to zero. You won't be judged at whatever background that you, you, you had. Yeah. And it's a playing field na equal for everyone. Yeah. If I wasn't the achiever I was before, this is my time to be an achiever. You know? Because when I was okay. studying, 
outside PMA, na unahan ka ng judgment. You know that all of your classmates who are in the honors are all of the students who were honor students since elementary. Yeah. So pagka klase mo sila ng high school, you know you can't compete with them. You just give way, you know? Like, ah, hindi, sure na sila yung mag-honor. Kasi sila mm-hmm. naman talaga yung nag-honor, you know? Meron ka ng tier system, may caste system na. Yeah. So you never have the chance to excel. I- I'm sure it's the same with you. Yung class president yun ng elementary, hanggang mag-graduate kayo, baka sila rin yung class president, vice president. They never yeah, give that chance to others. Yeah? yeah. So now I saw that chance. Like, wow, now I can start something new. You know, this is a good equal playing field for everyone. And this is a fair game now. I am competing with, I would say, like 118 best students probably in the Philippines. But no one knew that I was escaping in high school. No one knew yeah. that I almost <laughs> failed chemistry, you know? <laughs> Now they know. It's a new start. <laughs> a new start. It's okay. I mean, I, I was never, I was never an achiever before PMA. I never, ha- I never received any medal ever. Other than writing, you know, I write ever since. But academically and all other aspects. So of you were, yeah. Zero. So you you weren't really an achiever in elementary in high school. In high school. Yeah, and then and then if there was just this chance, like to reset everything, because nobody actually knows yeah. you, so you took that yeah. like you know uh, as an opportunity lang. That's just yeah. your decision lang talaga. Although I know that I was good ever since I am good, even in high school, I I know I know I have I can do it. You know, it's yeah. just that you don't want to compete anymore because of the status quo. Na yeah. you already have the classmates that are you know the in same that same classmates. Pool. Yeah, the same classmates. If you will do something good and try to try, you know, and become to be in the top, it will be a joke for them. Like, yung asar na, oy, uy, grabe, oh, di ba? Parang, True. Uh, True. Ano, uh, and then you'll stop doing that anymore because you don't want to be in the spotlight. You yeah. know what I mean? I agree with you, man. So, like, um, now just, you know, um, remembering elementary, remembering high school. <laughs> Because you, we were in a, we were in just a small province, um, even at sobrang laki yeah. tarlac, but in a, in a small like you know, um, pare pareho lang eh. like from for, from grade one to grade six, and then from first year high school to fourth year high school, it's the same people that you actually see dun sa taas same at people. the top, and and you don't want to you know challenge them because you already accepted that no, I can't do it. Nandun they're better. Eh. They're better than yeah, you. They're always better than and you know. Kung meron ka lang ng ibang bagay na you're better, then you're gonna be happy with that, diba? But yeah. if, if you know, if you will be talking to someone who is really nasa suguro high school or elementary and they have the same challenge, man, like, you know, that we've experienced in the past. Yeah. So, what do you think you can actually tell them? Like, you know, wait for college and then reset? Or no, you're talking to... You're, I think you're, that you're was just my... <laughs> <laughs> that was just my strategy because that was the only chance I had. Yeah, you yeah. Know? it's different from from one person to the other. But I always yeah. tell my my the youth leaders that I mentor that um, it's up to you. You know, ako ang palagi ko lang message of what I told them is that hindi ibig sabihin na you started bad or you, you didn't start good in elementary and high school. You're behind for life. I'm telling them na hindi mo kailangan na maging star student in elementary and high school because that is that is just high school and, and, and elementary. There's always a chance if you want to do it. There's always a chance. Just up to you. So if you realize after elementary you're not doing good, pagdating ng high school, eh, you really want to excel, why not? You know, who am I to tell them not to do good in high school if that's what their hearts desires? Although, sabi ko nga, sana they can overcome muna the the you know the hidden caste system na parang oh i don't belong to that group of intelligent people i have to be part of that moment and i think it's quite hard for you to think of that in elementary and high school because you still don't have that maturity yeah so maybe it's easier in college days kasi mas mature ka na you know yeah but again it doesn't matter I the most important thing that. is that the most important thing is that you enjoy what you're doing. It doesn't need to excel in everything because that won't define who you are. Achievements are not, you know, are, are not there to define you. 
achievements are there for you to inspire others. But it's not something that just defines you. It's nice to have achievements, but it doesn't make you like a better person compared to others because mas marami kang achievement. Um, ako, in my sense, in my case, I enjoy these achievements because I, I'm really working hard for them. But it's not for my own consumption because after I, I, I've achieved it, you got a trophy or a medal, it's just there. It's just part of your memory. But I use that to inspire others. Like, you know, I can. I can do it. And you can do it too. You can even do it better than me. Because when I was in high school, I wasn't even like a wow. anything. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm learning a lot of things. Like, you know, I can relate with a lot of things as well. Especially with the, with the people <laughs> out there that are, were not achievers back in elementary and high school. Same yeah. here. Even in college, I wasn't even an achiever. But at some point, there God, was a look reason. Look wow. You are yeah, the man, one interviewing like, me. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, uh, okay. So, uh, we always hear uh, and watch document documentaries uh, about how hard the training uh, is yeah. when it comes to the military, uh, Air Force, Navy, Marines, whatever, whatever branch it is. Um, can you tell us a story? What was the most mm. difficult challenge that may be tested or questioned your will if you still want to continue this or not. Like, um, an, an, ano ba tong ginagawa ko? Gusto, gusto ko pa ba to? Like, tell, tell me about question. the story. Yeah, yeah. Come but on. I have to play safe in here, okay? I know, but, you know, give us something that you can give. <laughs> okay. PME-wise, I love my institution so much and I don't think I can spill anything about it. Yeah. I am encouraging people to take the exams, go in, so you'll experience it yourself. I don't want. I don't want to share it. Tell you this is what experience because it might be different for you. Yeah. You know, so PME days, probably the biggest thing that affected me is the. Um, let's skip PME thing. I mean, PME thing. You can do it. You just have yeah. to take the exam. Do it for me, guys. You know, if you're watching right now <laughs> and you're curious about this, take the exams. It's every August. If you pass, you'll experience it yourself and you'll have your own story. But I think the challenge, the most challenging thing in my career was when I was assigned in the Navy already. Uh, my first three years in the Navy, I was in the ship. Yeah. Literally, like, I live in the ship. There was this time, um, I was stationed somewhere in Mindanao for a long time. We were just at sea. Um, I think it was three months. We were just floating. And it's so hard that what you see every day is just the sun. See. Yeah. And the sky and the sea. You see, the, the ship is like rolling, you know. If you're looking at the window, you see the sky, and then you see this, this, the water, the sky yeah. and the water. Sometimes it's, it's a test of mental attitude because it will really make you a bit, not really crazy, but it makes you think a lot of things, especially when a yeah. signal, you know. Okay, 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 okay. There's no signal there. You're literally, um, you know, the center of, like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, nowhere, Isolated. nowhere, like, yeah. What, what, what were, like, those men, men, mental challenges? Like, you know, what were the things that you thought about? Of like, course, you miss your family. Um, if you have a relationship, you miss the girlfriend. If you have a relationship. You miss the family, you can't even call them. And not only that, you're thinking of what they are thinking. They are dead worried about you and you can't do anything about it. You know, sometimes, ikaw, if you meet your family, sometimes you can endure that. You know, oh, I miss them, but I'm okay with that. But when it hit you, now what your parents are thinking, at that very moment, if they're so dead worried about you, then you become worried. Because yeah. sila nag and you have to like... So it's not for yourself, it's for your family. Nice. Yeah, so, 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 ano yung, ano, ano yung, um, yeah, ano yung... Uh, also, like, the most challenging thing is that we don't own our time. We are on call 24-7. So there was this time I was, um, I went to a holiday with Pia, actually. Uh, my beautiful wife, shout, shout out to her. Um, we planned a, a vacation. Um, Philippines lang naman. So we went somewhere. Uh, I think that was Boracay. Yeah, Boracay. So we went to Boracay. We really plan for that because we haven't, you know, booked yeah. a vacation for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Upon my arrival at the airport, like pag landing ng aeroplano, I had a call that I have to go back. Oh my God. 
Yeah, she was so sad. I have to leave her. I have to leave her in the cars. <laughs> Everything's paid. I was like, just enjoy it yourself. Oh, you that. left you left her there? Like, you know? Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Uh, and she was cool with it. I mean, my, my wife is a very independent woman. So she was like, yeah, I'm cool with it. Yeah, wow. so we don't really mm-hmm. hold our time that much. Yeah, man. Like, these are the things that you need to sacrifice for the country. And... <laughs> Wow. But it's cool, you know. Yeah. It's not every day. It's not every day Christmas, but there's like there are like lots of things that are fun. You can never you can never pay the yeah. maritime adventure. Okay? You can never pay for an adventure of a lifetime. That's I what I always yeah. think. The the adventure of being a naval officer, you know, that adventure of just traveling, you know, on a ship. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's it's amazing. It's priceless. Yeah, yeah it feels oh, no, like I want to be a navy after this after this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. no regrets, uh, bro. Yeah, man. What was the greatest lesson um a co- uh, from a colleague or maybe uh from a leader? Mm-hmm. Um, you know that he or he told you or taught you, and until now you're still holding mm-hmm. it in. Like you know what what is that great lesson? This might be long. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. I have like it's fine, man. Go. Two things. Two things. Well, three things. I have three things that I I, I always remember. These are the things. These are the, the sentences or like stories that changed my life the way I am right now. You know. First, when I was in PMA, we do chanting every time you do the jogging. You know, the jog. And then there was there's this poem that we are obliged to memorize. Wow. So there are two things that I learned in PMA. First, don't quit. So they will always tell you not to quit. You know, don't quit. Don't quit. Everything you're experiencing right now is temporary. There will be a better day after this. So don't quit. Don't. Don't let all of your efforts and sacrifices be a waste. There will be better days after this. This is temporary, so don't be. And the other one wow. that I really like use in my life every day is that uh, it's from the poem Desiderata. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, you will always, you know, like the main culprit of, of us being unhappy are judgments, you know? Insecurities, lagia, insecurities. If you're insecure with someone else, it it affects you. It hurts you. You know, uh, it loses you you, you. you lose your confidence because of that. But then this particular phrase or statement in the Desiderata changed my life. It says, "Never compare yourself to others. You may become vain and bitter. For always there is a greater and a lesser person than yourself." That is true. So never compare yourself to others. Why? Because if you found someone who's lesser than you, yeah. na nakita mo para, oh, mas magaling ako dito, you know, lesser yeah. person, you become boastful and arrogant. You know, you become someone who's full of your head because yeah. you met someone who's lesser than you. Or if you found someone who's greater than you and it says that, you know, for always there is a person greater and lesser than yourself. If you found someone who's like greater than you, you become envious. You become disheartened. You become jealous. Yeah. Envious is the proper term. You know, and then you become, you feel insecure. You feel life is unfair. So I stopped comparing myself to others and just live happily, you know. And then it what? changed my life. It was the beginning of my golden years. When I stopped comparing myself to others, I just realized I was just doing it for myself. Not like, ah, oh, nakakuha ng ganyan. I want to be like that. Some people say, na parang, no, I want to be inspired because they achieved it, you know? But then I stopped that idea. I mean, I, I blocked that idea into my mind. I just said, I'm going to do this because I want this. I'm going to do this because I know I can. Yeah. I stopped comparing myself to others. It worked. So that was the second. First, don't quit. No, magkasama to. Don't quit. This is the PMA story. Yeah, yeah. Don't quit and never compare yourself to others. For always, there's a greater and lesser person than yourself. So just strive to be happy. Third is a good story. So I'm going to share this story. Kind of long, but I think 
this is a nice story. So um, there was this wise man who traveled around the world to know what is the perfect present or the perfect gift for a person. So he went, he went everywhere in the world to know what is the perfect gift, what is the perfect present for you. Ikaw ba, Brian What is the perfect gift for you? What's the perfect present for you? Because, you know, I want a brand new car, you know, probably I want to be a great person, I want to be a president, I don't know. So first he went to Africa and talked to the people in Africa and asked them, like, what is the perfect present, perfect gift for you? The people in Africa said, it's just the abundance of food and water. If you will have a steady supply of food and water, that will be the perfect present for us. Yeah. And the wise man says, like, yeah, makes sense. Okay. He got his answer from there, but he's not happy. So he went to the Middle East, yeah. conflict area, and asked the people there, like, what is the perfect present for you guys in this particular part of the world? The people there said, um, for us, it's just a sustainable peace. It's just real peace that there will be no wars and everything. That was the perfect present for us. It's like, okay, that's so different from African nations, but uh, Agola went to the United States, asked the people what's the perfect present for them. They said, just to have a person that would love me and won't divorce me. There's a person that will stay with me until I, I, I die, you know? You know, we know the rates of divorce in the States are pretty high. Yeah. We went to Europe, asked the same question. People there said, it's just power and wealth. He went to Southeast Asia or to Asia, asked the people in Asia, and they said, for us, it's just the security of my family. You know, I think the perfect present for me is to know that my parents will have the best health care, my brothers and sisters will go to school, and we'll all have a good life. You see, Brian, it's different, diba, right? from all of the places, iba iba, yeah. a perfect present, a perfect gift for them. Yeah. Hanggang sa deathbed nitong wise man, he wasn't happy of what he heard. And he was lying on his deathbed and called for his youngest granddaughter named Sophia. He said, Sophia, come to me. I, I want to ask you something. This girl, this baby girl, this young girl, is about five years old. And ask this little girl and ask the uh, um, same question. I mean, I've traveled around the world to ask what is the perfect present yeah. For a person, I had, I received a lot of answers from different people in the world. But I want to ask you, as a five-year-old girl, what is the perfect present for you? He was thinking it might be a good doll or, you know, yeah. a toy. And then the kid said, grandfather, you already said, said it. The perfect present is now. That is the perfect present, right? Perfect present is now. And then it blew his mind. He says, like, yeah, you're right. The perfect present is this moment. We're having this good conversation. I hope we're inspiring a lot of people right now. And this is the perfect present at this very moment. You know, so what, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes people look for things that they don't have. People are looking for things that, that are lacking. But in reality, it makes sense. The perfect present is now. Perfect present. What is the perfect present now? Yeah. So yeah. Then I started to be more appreciative of every moment of my life. Like this conversation is amazing because I am enjoying this right now. I am feeling this. I'm grateful because this is my perfect present now. This is the best gift I have for this moment. You get it? Yeah, man. It was amazing. So yeah. Were you touched? Yeah, it, it, it's beautiful. <laughs> told you. <ya>. Told you. <laughs> that, is, that is one of the highlights of this show, man. And I appreciate the storytelling as well because it makes me understand your perspective on why are you like that? Why, why is your mentality like that as well when it comes to things? Like, yeah, I'm just you know, a cool dude. Enjoy yeah, life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are. You are. Definitely. Um, wow. That's, that's amazing, man. Uh, that's, that's why we go to the exam that you take while There's you're There's one last thing. Oh, go ahead. I Sorry. told you there's three, right? Yeah, yeah. The last thing is that I believe that love is, life is not about chances. I always believe that life is all about choices. One might say, might say Sir, it's a chance. What if i like to win a lottery? Right? That's it's a chance. You know, what if yeah. you won the lottery? That's a chance. I don't believe it's a chance. Even if you know what combination would be drawn tomorrow, if you did not decide to bet, you will never win that. Yeah. 
it's always decisions. Life is all about your choices, not about chances. It's what your choice choices are. Yan ang magdi-define of like where you are right now in your life. If I did not decide to enter PMA, I may not be here, you know. It's always your decision. It's always your, your decision. So not chances, but decisions. Choices. Choices. Life is not about chances. It's all about your choices. Yeah. Yep. That's that sums cool, up man. who I am. That yeah, sums yeah. up who I am, bro. Just revealed yeah, it in the young leader. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? One of, the, one of my mentor, um, when I was a consultant, uh, told me about the choices part, which is there, there are no right or wrong choices. There are only choices yes. that you can live with. And that is so true. That is so true. Because every choice it sometimes is, uh, is subjective to other people. So, yeah, that is, that is beautiful, man. Like, you know, th- those three things. And then dun lang umiikot lahat ng, you know, decision mo sa buhay or your choices sa buhay. Yeah. That says a lot. That says a lot. You are a cool dude. It's Tama. basic, Tama man. It's basic. Yeah, it is. It is. It it's is. basic. It is simple. I, I don't want to make my life complicated. It's true. basic. True. true. Wow. And guys, you actually heard that first here in The Young Leader because hindi talaga, hindi talaga nagada ng sekreto yung si E. So thank yeah, you for I that. I just want to plug that. that. I'm actually writing my book about it. So next time, oh, you know, okay. um, I'm writing my second book and this is part of that. Because I've never wrote a book about my, my, my thinking, about my ideas and ideals. Yeah, man. So I'm actually like starting right now. Um, I'm in the middle of it. Um, this is my second book after the one I wrote for d and yeah, so, yeah. yeah. This is like your personal, like you will be the, you will publish this yourself and not on the... Um, no, I already agency. have a publisher. Uh, I have a publisher that would publish it. So I was offered to write about it because of the nice. speaking engagements nice. that I've been doing. And uh, it's mainly about um, what did I do to be in my position. So it's not more of like a biography. It's more of like this yes. little thing, like this story, like... Yeah, Let's it's similar to, about the stories yeah, I it's, it's actually similar to what we're talking about. How did you make it? Like, you know, mm. from, from the very in start. In a way, yeah. Because I'm already yeah. like, you know, spilling what will be in my book. So please I know, I know. I'm actually <laughs> looking forward to that book. I'm looking forward to that book. Okay, Hopefully going back to, uh, going back to the... Okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, going back to the question that I was asking a while ago that uh, there is or are neuropsychological exams administered in, in the Navy, right? Why are you smiling? I think you know the question. <laughs> your, your, your results reveal that you are a people smart. You are, you I, are uh, people smart, I am, I, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so for the, for, the, for the young ones out there that doesn't understand what is, what is to be a people smart, what is actually, what is actually people smart? And can, can that be learned? There are thousands of definitions about, you know, Being you can always smart, Google it, yeah. what yeah. is people smart. But for me, it's simple. Never burn bridges. And take care of your network. You know, when I say network, it's a network. So some people, you know, in this, in this day, in this, I would say, generation, yeah. we say it's network. Well, I still think it's friends, you know, just, just collect friends. Just collect a lot of friends. Because why? Why? Because you'll never know what you'll learn from them. You'll never know um, what they can contribute in your life. It's not just being a, a user, because you can always like help them as well, whatever it is that they need. Yeah. But take care of that, you know. Expand your horizon, meet a lot of people, and keep them. Because that will make your world bigger. Yeah. So I, I always travel, you know that. I, I'm, I'm yeah. before, before my DMD job and before I got married, married, I was a backpacker. I was traveling around the world and I meet a lot of people that I keep in contact with. Um, I'll give you an example. Like, on, this is my phone right now. If I will search, like for example, uh, Cebu, I will just type Cebu and you have a lot on of my, can you see it? Cebu. Yeah, 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 and these are yeah. all like people from Cebu that I know. There's like Cebu doctor, there's a Cebu driver, there's a Cebu nice. anything. So, uh, what I do is that I usually do the first move to, 
to be in contact with people. Yeah. Because sabi nga nila, you'll, you'll have more friends if you talk to 10 people than waiting for 100 people to talk to you. Oh, that's And you know, nice. in this conversation right now, you know how engaging I am and talkative I am. So I just love talking to people. I just love meeting people. And I use that to my advantage. Hence, the Navy branded me as a people's smart person. Because <laughs> I have lots of friends. <laughs> no, but... I mean, uh, like, we, we, we haven't been friends for a long time. But we love true. each other now. I mean, like, we're really true. friends now. We click, yeah? yeah? And I yeah, don't yeah. think there's... By the way, Brian and I are in the same organization. The Junior Chambers International. Shout out to the people. The, the, the one in Makati, the Makati chapter. I don't think there's anyone in JCI Makati who would say, I'm uh, sorry for the term. I'm like, no, I'll just say, <laughs> someone that, <laughs> that won't like me. I think I'm a likable person. I'm friends with okay. everyone. Yeah, sure. Uh, you are very <laughs> likable. You are being safe and you're turning red. But yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> yeah, you are you are definitely likable, E, because um, you are the yeah, one what, who first approached people. That is, I, I have I to do. agree with that. I was yeah. the first one who went to you. Yeah. And I already yeah, you know would, your background before you even met me. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I still remember that was in Batangas when you fetched me, right? Like, you know, when yeah, we were yeah. on our way to Naga. Yeah, good times, yeah. good times. Now, now, the question is, can you actually learn um, being people smart? Because... For me, I, I wasn't really gifted when it comes to networking. I wasn't really gifted when it comes yeah. to connecting people. It just happened that I needed it in a job at some point. That's why I needed to learn it. Do you, so believe, you, networking, like, do you believe networking is a talent or a skill? It is. I, I agree with that. It is. It is a skill, right? Yeah. Which means that you can learn. Yeah. It is, it is something that you can develop. So it doesn't mean that go. It doesn't for me, yeah. For me. It doesn't mean that you are if you are like naturally shy, you can't yeah. connect anymore. Yeah. Um but it's just a choice. Babalik na naman ako doon. It's just a choice. Kasi kahit gaano ka mahihiyay ng tao, nagkaka girlfriend pa rin naman. Which means yeah. they can do it. Diba? I know a person who's very shy, can't even speak in front of a lot of people, pero ang daming napapasagot. Which means that his networking skills is, <laughs> are working. You know? His, his so, networking so, skills is only with a niche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, everyone I get you. can actually do it. And uh, for the young ones out there, uh, this is actually true in the, in the real world. It's not actually what what you can actually do but who you know at some point uh that's that's something that you need to develop it's a skill like uh e said mm-hmm. and you have to develop that because it is really needed in the in the real world once you graduated college or not even well if this is for for the young leaders for the kids for the yeah. people listening right now i think the best advice in this matter is just be yourself because if you are yourself, people will like you the way you are. True, there might, there, there might be people that you, will exp- that you will encounter in your life that won't click with that kind of attitude or kind of ways that you were living. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, you can't please yeah. everyone. Yeah. But there are, I would say, in the Philippines alone, 110 million strong people. Impossible naman sa 110 million people, eh, walang magkagusto sa magkaklik sa you. Diba? Yeah. So there will always be people that will like the way you are. And that is the best thing. You don't want to, to push yourself and present a different person, a different perso- persona, and act differently sure. the, the normal way na ikaw. It's so hard to maintain. Diba? Mahirap yun. Nagpapanggap ka lang, nagalap ka lang. So yeah. I think that the biggest advice I can give in this particular subject is just be who you are. Kung hindi ka magustuhan ng iba, don't worry. That's okay. You don't need to please everyone. But I am sure, I'm pretty sure, there will be people who would appreciate who you are and would click with that kind of mentality that you have. So just be who you are. Stick it's to nice, that. man. You are. Yeah, just be authentic. Don't, you yeah. know, just don't stop copying people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just be authentic. Okay, you are an advocate of peace and youth empowerment, right? So, 
what got you involved in this advocacy because there will be that you can actually have like a lot of advocacies but these two things yeah. you concentrate your energy in so yeah. why why how did how did that start so as a backgrounder to all of our viewers and listeners um other than being a military officer i am very very active in my advocacy which is empowering the youth at the yeah. same time promoting sustainable peace Uh, well, obviously, why did I choose sustainable peace? Because I'm with the military. I know I'm exposed with the conflict. I know what is happening out there. And I'd like to contribute in my own ways on how to address this. Empowering the youth naman is that ever since this, this started when I became part of the Ayala Young Leaders many, many years back. So let's talk. Let's talk about the youth youth advocacy. So when I was in PMA, um, I was part of the Ayala Young Leaders. I was selected to be part of the Ayala Young Leaders Congress. Um, and then eventually you become part of the Ayala Young Leaders Alliance. This is a group of all of those people who were invited to be part of the Ayala, Ayala Young Leaders Congress. Yeah. It's a big network of um, students. Now, every year they only get 70. And yeah. it's really hard to get in. Talagang sinasala nila. And they're really looking for future leaders. When I was there, attended that Congress, I felt so empowered. I felt that there are so many things that you can do as a youth leader. And you are a significant part of the society. I've never felt that and knew that before. Before, I was just thinking, ah, bata pa ako, let the older people drop, you know, uh, think of those problems. Let yeah. the older people solve that. I'm young. But when I went into that Young Leaders Congress, They made us realize that you can actually do something. And all of the things that you will be doing as a youth are actually very um, important in the society. They will have big impacts. So parang, wow, that was my awakening moment. I would like yeah. to give a big shout out to Mr. Simon Moses Gill. He's okay. one of my mentors in that particular aspect. So, yeah, that was the, the beginning. I felt empowered. Then I, I started to... Siguro that is also one of the reasons I started achieving. Kasi I know I can do so much. Na pwede pala, pwede pala. And you can contribute pala. So, um, after that, I became part of the uh, Asia Pacific Center for Student Leadership. Uh, Asia Pacific Center for Student Develop- uh, Leadership Development. So, yeah. this is a group wherein uh, it gathers about 800 to 1,000 students every year. Wow. Uh, we started in 2010, I think 2011. So we get them from all around the country. Kind of pattern with the Congress that we've done before. Pero a lot yeah, yeah. different. Um, the school sends their, their students there kasi this is already DepEd the proof. Uh, this is in partnership with DepEd. Yeah. So all of these young leaders, 800 to 1,000 of them, uh, we gather them for like three days do a leadership camp. And uh, I felt that, that I was contributing in a larger scale pagdating sa mga youth leaders natin. Because you, you in a way, parang nagkakaroon ng chance to change their mindset towards yeah. the better. Like through this conversation mm-hmm. that we have, you know, nababago mo yung mindset nila. You give them hope. You, you not really teach where you inspire them to be themselves sure. you inspire them to do better you inspire them to just go for that goal and it's nice because after the congress my inbox will be flooded by like hundreds of messages and I remember on my first congress one student messaged me and said sir you know what I am actually suicidal I tried to kill myself twice and Before this Congress, I was thinking, this is my last chance, and I would just end it. But after our session, after all of the enlightenment that I learned from you, I think it's worth it to live. Wow. I don't think that I still want to end my life forever. And the mother um, asked for my number and called me. She's like, sir, you know, my son is like this. Now, he's so different. Masigla na siya, sobrang inspired na siya mabuhay. And I would like to thank you for that. I was like, you just saved my son's life. 
And I was like, wow, I never did wow. realize that. So that was it. I, I got glued to it. And this has been running for many, for many years now. So it's great. Um, remember, we have 800 to 1,000 students every year. Yeah? But I was... I still look for more, you know, I was like, sayang naman yeah. opportunity, and I love networking. So what I did is that we founded a group called Youth Leaders of the Philippines. We get like few people from the 800 that will be part of this group. Right now, we have about 700 members. So may just sinasala din namin sila. If they attended that Congress event, they didn't, but they are like youth leaders, they can always apply. Uh, we have a Facebook, although it's a closed Facebook group, they can apply and then we can ask them to submit something so they can be accepted. Yeah. Now we have 700 strong students. Why do we have this group? This is like a group of opportunities. Um, we have a core group composed of like five people that feeds them with opportunities. Kumbawa, mahirap, hindi makapag-aral, pero matalino, hindi lang matalino, matyaga. We link them to people that can send them to school. Wow. Kaya, merong, merong contest pala na essay writing contest of, for this particular organization. Eh, taga Mindanao ka, taga Tawi-Tawi ka, taga, let's say, far-flung areas, taga Balabak ka Palawan. Hindi yung maabot sa'yo. Once na umabot sa'yo, late na. So that okay. is what we do. We, we publish all of these opportunities for them para they can have the equal footage and they can receive that all the time. And then we, we help them facilitate. No, they're interested to do it. We, we link them to people. See what networking can do. We link them to people that, that can help. Other than that, this group also help each other because they're student leaders. They have problems in school. They bullying problems. They don't, want, don't know how to solve it. They can post it in the group and all of the other schools that had a better strategy will share uh, you know, you can do this, you can try this, this is what we've yeah. done before and it was effective. But it was a what's good community. The, yeah, what's the age group of this community? Um, grade, grade 9 to college. Grade 9 is second year high school. Basta, ano ka, student leader ka. So that's yeah, the main criteria. You have to yeah. be a student leader. Or not student, you have to be a community leader. SK, or, basta meron ka leadership yeah. position. Yeah, as as young as that, and then they're part uh with, in a group group like this with similar minds, similar motivation, and everything. Ano na lang kaya ang mangyari sa kanila after ten years or twenty years? Na you know, that's tama what yung, I'm saying, man. Dude, what I'm you saying. are actually you you have something big here because now I'm understanding. Okay, kung ako nung mga, mga <clears throat> maybe thirteen years old ako, and then someone actually mentored me in leadership. <clears throat> nasa na kaya tayo ngayon, di ba? But wow, that's that's a very Great opportunity for these kids. Yes. Ano pinaka ano? Ano pinaka um, highest achievement ng ano ng, ng grupo niyo? Um, well, before that, uh, I, I told you there's a core group, yeah. So, yeah, the five months. Uh, one yeah. of the core group members right now is a, is in Oxford in UK. Uh, wow. Also from a very very humble beginnings, inspiring these kids that you know, Shang in charge of scholarships. Oh, there's a scholarship in Japan. There's this this exchange program in this particular country, you just have to apply, she in charge them. The other one is Pia, my wife. Um, by the way, for the people listening, my wife is a journalist. She's part of the Malacanang Press Corps. And sometimes she would post something on the group and said, uh, let's have a very healthy discussion. What do you want to ask the president? Because I'll have a press con with him tomorrow. Imagine wow. that. You're like 13 years old, 14 years old, and you'll yeah. have a chance to ask something sa Presidente ng Pilipinas. So, Pia will choose. Like, oh, this is a good question. This is a good, I'm gonna ask that tomorrow. And then, we'll post the reply. It's like, imagine your, your question was answered yeah, by the yeah. President. Look at yeah. that kind of, of empowerment. Not only that, the inspiration will give you. True. You will tell your grandkids about that. But when I was 14, my question was answered by the, fel- by the president. president of the Philippines live on TV. Yeah. Diba? Wow. Little things, little things. Not really yeah. big, you know. It, it's not a complicated group. Sabi ko nga, basics lang kami. But I think it's doing a lot of wonders to these young, young leaders. Yeah, man, you're, you're, I'm actually amazed as well because sobrang humble mo din. Like, you know, this thing, sabi mga, you, there's a student in Oxford now because of this group and maybe other Ivy League school. And then you, you st- Although not because of this group, you know? she's just really good and she made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
But maybe one of the key areas, one of the key areas or one of the reasons, right? Napaka-humble mo, bro. Napaka-humble mo talaga. Hindi <laughs> naman dahil sa group namin yun. Kaya siya nag-group Oxford student. Hindi um, naman dahil sa group namin yun. So, okay. um, other things is that, um, ano mga achievement namin? Hindi naman siya achievement, pero I'm proud to say that we were able to help a lot of kids. We have yeah. few students right now who are going to college for free because we were able to link them with, uh, wow. with uh, people who can afford to send them to school. So we don't use our own money, you know? Like, for example, the, the owner of this particular company or particular organization, yeah. we just yeah, talk yeah. to them. We tell them, we're not a foundation, you know? But this kid is in dire need of help. She yeah. or he is very responsible, use leader, kaso talaga hindi kaya mag-aral, and she'll just stop. We want to sponsor her. Like, sure, how much bang kailangan? Ito lang, minimal enrollment, ganito ganyan, ito lang yung magiging. Oh, sige, sure, I, I can help. I can send her to school. Nice. Hindi lang namin binobroadcast. This is the good thing, Brika. We've been friends for for quite a long time now. Not really long, but you know, we've been yeah, friends yeah. for a decent time. But you've never heard me discuss this even in JCI, you know? True, These man. are like yeah. my little stories that I just do on the sides. So even before JCI, I've been doing this, but it's just not published. You don't even see my Facebook Now I post something about it. True. So this is for the youth leaders of the Philippines. This yeah. is my advocacy for youth empowerment. I, I am really promotion. amazed. Yeah, I, I'm really amazed with whatever you're doing at the moment for our youth. And, you know, talaga may oh, pag-asa. Talaga may pag-asa, man. Meron. I believe in the Philippines. So, but, uh, peace promotion naman. Sustainable peace promotion. You know, I've been exposed to that since I became a soldier at the age of 17. I've been in the service for like 19 years now. It's been a long time. I'm not young. I mean, I'm not old, but I've been in the service... I think I've been in the service more... Parang mas mahaba yung nasa servisyo kaysa wala. Wala na wala na. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, what about the piece? Like what, what, what about now. the piece? Yeah. 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 So, of course, you're exposed to that. Uh, the problem that I see is that when the AFP launched a project called IS, IPSP Bayanihan, they instilled to you that winning a war is not winning in battles, but winning the, the heart and minds of the Philippines. I'll give you an example. Siguro merong rebelde. Tapos, sadly, namatay yung father niya in an encounter. Ano nga gawin ng anak? Pag lumaki na siya, paghihiganti lang yung tatay niya. So it's a never-ending cycle. You know? Tapos, hindi makapagsumbong yung mga communities natin kasi natatakot sila na baka balikan sila ng kung sino mang grupo yan. So I realized, if we will have, we will win the heart and minds of the Filipino yeah. people, it will be easy to address this. Halimbawa, yung isang community, nakuha yung trust and confidence, uh, nakuha ng military trust and confidence nila, sila mismo magsusumbo. Hindi magsusurvive yung mga groups natin. Yung mga, you know, yung mga bad groups natin if yeah. walang susuport sa kanila, you know? At kung may magsusumbong sa kanila. That's, that's a different side of story. But, ang na-realize ko naman, I'd like to target the, the kids. Yeah. Kasi kung bata ka pa lang, meron ka ng exposure sa military, um, meron ka ng exposure sa ginagawa ng gobyerno for you, magdadalawang isip ka. Kasi isipin mo na hindi pala sila kalaban. Kasi yun nga, kung wala akong exposure, ang isipin ng bata, kalaban yan eh. Yan ang pumatay sa tatay ko. Kalaban yan, yan sumira sa buhay ko. But if you're doing the opposite, you know, and guns are there, pero, you know, you're doing something for them. Magdadalawang isip siya at least na parang kaya kalang, hindi naman kalaban yung mga yan, kaibigan niya. Yeah. Yeah. You, you went with me in one of my little projects yeah. called Sa Mga Mata ng Bata. So, aside from the youth leaders, I run a little drive uh, to give television sets, you, you know that, uh, in elementary schools. Mm. I was thinking it's supposed to be like continuous ngayong year, kaso nagka-COVID. Uh, what we do is that we give television sets to schools na wala talagang TV sets para ma-elevate ma- yung kanilang um, pag-aral kasi kailangan yeah. na rin talaga mag-level up. Pero hindi lang yun, I don't stop there. The TV is embedded with AFP-approved programs. Yeah. Which means that napapa-film showing yun sa mga bata. Other than that, pinaparecite yung panatang makabayan sa kanila. That was nice, no? When you, when you heard the kids like, Doing the Panata Makabayan, shouting with all of their 
uh, might na, mahal ko ang Pilipinas, ako ay batang Pilipino, mahal ko ang Pilipinas. It was so good to hear. And these kids, maalala nila yun. Ako, kung mayroong batang sundalo pumunta nung, nung bata ako, maalala ko yun, for sure. Exactly. So in a, in a little way, it's a very little way, it's not a direct approach. But I'm sure it helps in a big way. There's another thing yung sa, sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa project, uh, this is naman targeting um, grade 5 and grade 6 students. Uh, we invite military officers to go to their school other than, you know, may mga donations. Hindi lang yun, may mga program, may leadership symposium. Yeah. We invite lawyers to, to uh, para makinig sa mga problems ng mga parents. Holistic approach para sa mga bata. And they see people in uniform. Um, telling their stories. Sabi niya, ako, nurse ako, pero nag-join na ako ng military. Ako, ganito ako dati, mahirap kami, pero gusto ko magsundalo ngayon, nagsiserve ako. You know, it inspires them. Imagine you see a lot of military officers in different uniforms. Tapos isa kang elementary student, di ba? Yeah. Nare-realize mo na parang, uy, this is also a, an option for me. Yeah, man. And in, um, in, in my thinking, that is a little way, my little humble way of contributing to promoting sustainable peace. At ang ganda rito, hindi man ito alam ng AFP. Actually, siya sabihan niya ako, ah, inform mo na AFP about it. It can be integrated project. Hindi ko pa nagagawa. But these projects are purely initiatives. I mean, the, the, the AFP doesn't really know what I'm doing. But, yeah, nakailang run na tayo. And, the good thing yeah, is you so, are you're actually true to your core na you really want the change or you really want to spark something dito sa mga mata ng bata. And dito sa mga young kids na to na, you know what, uh, tama ka, I'm gonna be remembering a soldier visited me when I was young and then they're not really bad people. Ano yung mga sinasabi ng mga nasa paligid ko, right? That's a very good start for, for you know, for young ones na, okay, positive yung tingin ko sa sundalo. Very nice. Wow. And since I love kids, then I believe in the Filipino youth. You're wearing a lot of hats. Like, it seems like you don't stop with, yeah, you know, I don't know, a teacher, uh, you know, uh, a writer, a soldier. But how do you define your happiness, man? At this level, at this level, sabi mo, you're, hmm. you're almost 20, year, 20 years of service. Pero, ano yung ng happiness at this level? Your own definition. Ooh, that is a tough question. I would love I think, to hear the answer. Um, <laughs> for me, I think happiness is not something that is just one thing achievable. You know, like, parang, oh, this will make me happy. Oh, this will make me happy. Parang, even if you, like, for example, you really wanted something, achieved it, you're happy for a while and then you're not happy anymore, yeah? True. So I always think, this is the first time I've asked that question, so I'm doing this really, like, from my top of my head and from my heart. I think for me, from E, happiness is a collection of different moments that matters in your life. It's not a one thing, big time thing. I would say, oh, my happiness is my family. It's not just that. Oh, my happiness is this or my achievement. I think happiness is a collection of different Things, memories, aspects in your life that matters. And that is a totality. I guess it's hard to say I am now ultimately 100% happy. Because it's still collecting something, true. you know? True, true. Parang deep, pero that's just how I view it. <laughs> Parang ang core niya, pero yeah. Yeah, man, thank you. I mean, this, like, one of this, one of, one of this part, or part of the episode is you're actually vulnerable and I, I, I like seeing that part. Uh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> Thank you wow. for, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not ready for that and that's good. <laughs> so, uh, E, what advice can you give your 12-year younger self? Because I know in the, the past 12 years ago, you were maybe starting a career. Mo. I like that. So, yeah. and, and maybe maybe there are times that you want to give up or maybe there are times that yeah. you're, you're doubting again your, your decision. So, what can you give and what, what advice can you give your 12 year younger self? First, wear sunblock. <laughs> I like that. I it saw the pictures, you. by the way. I saw the pictures, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. 
once you reach the age of 25 and above, your face will change. You won't enjoy the same patuitam's cute boy look. So we're yeah. sad enough to preserve that. <laughs> oh, this is so jolly now. But yeah, I'll still tell him that. We're sad luck. Second is that uh, just continue on doing what you're doing. Because at this very moment in my life, I wouldn't say I have no regrets, but I'm happy, you know. At this very moment, I'm sure the 12-year-old kid will be very proud of what we became. So I wouldn't tell him to change anything. Because I live my life to the fullest. I lived it the best way I think I can. But um, if there would be a better way of living it, that would be nice. But I'm already happy with this. I mean, why change things if they're not broken? Yeah, why, why change things if they're not broken? So I just tell him, you know, stop thinking about anything. Just live your life the way you are living now. You'll be fine. Trust me. A few years from now, you'll be in the Young Leader Show and talking about this and nothing will change because you're still awesome. <laughs> Nice. Uh, I love I like that, that, man. I, I, I love that. I love that um, advice that you're going to give that person or, or your younger self because, you know, just do your thing. Don't worry about, don't think about a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, just continue whatever you're doing. You'll be fine. You'll yeah. be fine. That just shows that wala, wala talagang regrets. Wala tal- you know, you're, you're contented. No, I'm not saying I don't have any regrets. I might have regrets, but I don't think of those regrets anymore. Because again, it was my choice wow. not to take them. You know, nice, man. Nice. It was my choice. So, sabi ko nga sa'yo, it's not about chances, it's about choices. I've decided not to take those. So, if I will still have regrets about those things, I'm just torturing myself. I already made the decision not to take them. So, accept na. Move on. Yeah, true. So, talking about regrets, um, let's, you know, have one more question that is really interesting here. What is your greatest fear at this level? Sorry, Pia. <laughs> <laughs> what, is your, what is your greatest fear at this level? We're, we're almost done. Don't worry. It's okay. Take oh, two. God. What is your greatest fear do at I this level? Do you, do, you fear, do you fear something or, you know? Um, first time I'm afraid of big spiders. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> greatest fears. At this level. Because um, definitely when you were young, it's a different fear. Now that you are who you are, now you have achieved a lot of things in life, a lot of mm-hmm. awards, a lot of, you know, things. What, what do you fear most? Let me think about that. I've never really thought of that because I'm a very proactive man. Yeah. You know, I always like ignore those things. I wouldn't say I'm fearless, but that is a very good question. Perhaps... My biggest fear would be for young Filipinos to misinterpret what I'm trying to convey to them. Not only that, for, for people listening to what I'm like preaching or like what I'm mentoring, what I'm saying, that they will misinterpret it, that it will not help them become a better version of themselves. I think that would be a, the biggest fear for me. Because you know how much I, I love the Filipino youth. You know how, how passionate I am with this. So, siguro yun. Pag nalaman ko, o kaya na feel ko na instead of helping them out, I was actually helping them deteriorate. Or I'm helping them to not become better people. Yun nga, parang misinterpret nila yung information. May misinterpret nila yung teachings and they will apply it in a very different way that it will just make them not better people. They won't be in the best versions of themselves. Yun talaga. I think that will be. Nice, man. Kasi hindi ko yun control eh. yeah. That is something that is not controllable in my mind. All others controllable naman. So, greatest fear mo, mawala family mo, then just be good to your family. They will never be gone, you know? Greatest fear mo is that you don't have achievements anymore. You don't stop working hard and working smart. But this one, it's uncontrollable. Yeah. Grabe. Tsaka ano, Napaka- isa pang greatest fear ko siguro, ano, yung, ano, hindi magustuhan ng mga viewers at saka ng listeners mo itong podcast. 
<laughs> Definitely, man. Uh, I am learning a lot. <laughs> By the way, in this episode, so same, same, same. Yung magiging reaction for sure. Um, it just shows talaga na na al- talaga talagang yung you know yung advocacy mo is actually totoo ka dun sa advocacy mo like whatever happens oh, yeah, you're, you're you are afraid of being misinterpreted by the young ones kasi baka nga ya diba iba yung maiisip nila kung ano man so, imbis na makatulong eh, hindi makatulong kasama yeah yeah so we're, we're, when talking about young ones what advice can you give them lalo na dun sa mga nag start or maybe nag-fail ng isang beses ta- tapos ayaw na mag-try ulit or maybe yung mga younger younger ones na you know they they afraid to start something because maybe afraid sila na ma-judge sila. So, I replay ko lang yung sinabi ko sa iyo kanina. Don't quit. Do not compare yourself to others for always there's a greater and a person that per, uh, better person than yourself so just try to be happy. Pabalik ko lang and your life is all about your choices and not your chances and always be grateful because your perfect present is now. This is the best gift that you'll ever have. So enjoy it. See, sabi ko siya, back to basic ako eh. Wala akong, yeah, man. Wala akong ibang sasagot dyan. I'll always just come back to those four things. E, yeah, sobrang right. salamat. Sobrang salamat. Like, thank you so much you're for always being welcome. here. I, I, I know na, you know, you're a busy person. Um, but, 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 uh, invite everyone on where they can find you, your social. Alam ko marami kang programs, marami kang ginagawa <laughs> na, you know, invite them on your socials or your your upcoming book, whatever, kung, kung kailan yan. Sure. I think I'd like to promote my Instagram. So, I have an Instagram account. Uh, with a very decent followership because I promote cheap travel. Uh, not only cheap oh. travel, also like positivity and stuff. But uh, I ko nga before before I went into all of these things, I was a hardcore backpacker. I was a hardcore traveler. That was my passion. First passion is traveling. And making the Filipinos think na kaya nila mag-travel, you don't need to be rich to travel the world. That's what I was promoting wow. that Instagram. So if you want to have like tips about visa application or like where is the cheapest place to blah, 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 yeah. please visit my Instagram account. It's Errol De La Cruz. That's just my name. At E-R-R-O-L De La Cruz. At E-R-R-O-L De La Cruz. And uh, yeah. most of the posts you see there are all travels. Um, and I hope you'll be inspired that... Uh, you can also like travel because you know traveling is opening your mind and perspective. So I mean, if you never travel, it's like reading the book, pero yung back cover lang. It's just wow. travel. You can yeah. read the entire book. Yeah, I've been to like a lot of countries cheaply and for free, and you'll have like stories there. Uh, you know, Definitely. So please in a- follow it. In every in every country or in every place that you visit, there's always a new story that you can you know share everyone true, at some point. True, true, yeah. true, true. Wow, man, that's like uh, another side of you. Nah, hindi natin atakal, but definitely we. Oh, the traveling! Be, oh yeah, next yeah. time we can. Yeah, well, yeah. I we told myself be, before I turn thirty, I have to be, I have to visit thirty countries before I reach thirty. On my thirtieth birthday, I was on my thirty fourth. Wow, that's for another episode. Maybe when yeah, you launch yeah. your book. Maybe when you launch your book, man. Like I would Probably love. We to... can just talk about travel next time. You know, it's yeah, also a good not? thing to inspire the Filipinos. Nah, yeah. you don't need to be rich to be tra- to travel. You don't need to be rich. Like I, I found, I, I can find like hotels for like 149 pesos per night. What? What? Yeah, I, like uh, how to score the cheapest tickets. Okay, now you follow E, especially the ones who are interested in traveling and the backpackers yeah. out there. Yeah, you follow E on Instagram. And E, again, thank you for your time and thank you for your service. You just write it there. Can you write it there on your podcast? Yeah, yeah I, will. I will. I will. You just have to yeah. follow, follow the link um, somewhere. Uh, and, you know, ladies and gentlemen, the, one of the youngest lieutenant commander we have in the Philippines, Mr. Errol. Not, not anymore. There are lots of younger lieutenant commanders now. That was three years I ago. S- <laughs> I said one. I said one. <laughs> okay. Errol E. De La Cruz. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
So guys, I uh, want to take the, this opportunity as well to thank everyone who are supporting the Young Leader Podcast as we hit a thousand followers in Facebook. And as early as one month, uh, you know, doing the podcast, we're already on the top 100 career podcasts in the Philippines. And keep on supporting Pinoy podcasters and check out the Philippine Podcast Directory for other shows that you will surely like. Thank you again for the support. This is the Young Leader Podcast with me, your host, Brian Dial. This was another episode of The Young Leader Podcast with Brian Dial. Now make some noise and tell your friends about us. What up, what up? Like, share, and subscribe at The Young Leader Brian. For more high key content, visit us at brianddial.com. <clears throat> As we always say, and whatever you do, be human. Be human.